in my written work, like the book The Kalam Cosmological Argument was mentioned, I have a second scientific argument for the beginning of the universe based upon the second law of thermodynamics. And what I try to do there is to show that given the second law of thermodynamics, uh, a universe which exists infinitely into the future will come to equilibrium, will come to heat death. And therefore, if you have a universe which has existed from infinity past, it should now exist in a state of equilibrium or heat death. And the fact that we don't shows that the universe must have been created a finite time ago and simply had its low entropy uh, condition put in as an initial condition at the beginning of the universe. This universe has not been here forever. As a matter of fact, we now know beyond any reasonable doubt that the universe of space, time, and matter began to exist at a point in the past. First of all, the second law of thermodynamics applied to the universe. The second law of thermodynamics applied to the universe. $1.98 cent word, but basically the second law of thermodynamics, when you apply it to the universe, says, basically this is the point, the universe is running out of gas. That's the point. We now know the universe is using up its useful energy. The energy in the universe that's useful is being burned up like fuel. You might want to think of the universe as an automobile with a limited amount of fuel in it that's being burned up as the car is driven. Or you might want to think of the universe as a watch that has been wound up and the battery is using up energy as the watch winds down. Now what's eventually going to happen to that automobile? It's going to run out of gas. What's going to happen to the watch? It's going to stop because it's going to, it's going to use up its fuel in the form of its battery. Now, Time Magazine, a few years ago, ran a featured story on the cover as to how the universe is going to end. And in the Time Magazine article, it said that our universe is event, three things are going to happen to the universe that we live in. Number one, the lights are going to go out. Now, why is that? Well, where does light come from? It comes from stars, and more specifically, from nuclear reactions that are burning inside stars. Well, guess what's going to happen to the sun and all the stars eventually? Those reactions are going to use up all the fuel that is contained in those stars, and every single one of them is going to go out. There's not going to be any light any longer anywhere. Secondly, the heat's going to go out. Somebody's going to turn the heat off. <laughs> And that's for the same reason that the, that the nuclear reactions generating heat are going to be burned up and there will no longer be any fuel to generate heat anywhere in the universe. Third and finally, the universe is going to become motionless. That's called the quiescent universe. The universe is going to reach a point where there will no longer be any motion in it. Now... Can you understand that if the universe never had a beginning, that means it's always been here? And if it's always been here, and it's using up its fuel, it should have used up its fuel infinitely long ago? Or to put the point a little bit differently, if the universe didn't have a beginning, we should have already reached the point where there was no light, no heat, and no motion. Because we haven't reached that point yet, and because the universe is running out of its energy, there had to be a point here where it began. And as one British scientist, Paul Davies, said, it looks like there was a time when the universe was wound up, and it's winding down ever since. Uh, this is not an argument developed by Bible school teachers. Uh, this <laughs> follows from one of the most fundamental laws of contemporary physics and engineering. The second law of thermodynamics says that in a closed system, the available energy will become less and less until finally you have no available energy at all. This is called a growth in entropy that finally results in heat death. Right? It is a generalized law of the universe. Now, for the atheist, the universe has got to be such a system because there's no God outside. The universe is all there is. It is such a closed system. But according to the second law of thermodynamics, it only takes a finite amount of time to reach heat death. 
Think about it. For the atheist, the universe is all there is, so it's always been around. It's been around for an infinite period of time. But an infinite period of time will embrace any finite period. So the universe would already have reached heat death if the atheist were right. Now, it evidently hasn't because there's enough energy left to discuss the question. <laughs> so, we conclude that the atheist is wrong in his assumptions. One of two things must be the case, maybe both. The universe was created a finite amount of time ago and hasn't yet had enough time to reach heat death. Okay? God created it. And or there is a cosmic gas station attendant out there somewhere feeding energy. That's known as continuous creation by the theologians. But you've got to have creation. That's the point. You've got to have creation. The second law of thermodynamics insists on it. Go to Gordon Van Weyland's textbook on thermodynamics published uh, by, uh, uh, let me see, uh, Wiley and Son in Philadelphia, the scientific and technical publisher. Uh, Gordon Van Weyland was head of engineering at the University of Michigan. This is the most widely used text in, in thermodynamics. Van Weyland says, my authors and myself must believe in God. We have no choice. Second law of thermodynamics insists upon this.